On December 22nd, 2021, Kazuyoshi Miura announced that he was considering his options for the 2022 season, meaning that the world's oldest professional footballer could be extending his career into his 35th season and playing on at the ripe old age of 55. But where would he be playing? King Kazu finished the 2021 season with Yokohama FC, where he's been since 2005. But Kazu is said to be disappointed with his lack of game time, having only featured in one league match in 2021. In a Kyodo news report via the Japan Times, Kazu said, I want to sort out what is most important for me, and then make an honest decision based on my feelings. I'm getting a lot of input from the clubs on how they thrive on the power of their community's influence, and how they aspire to earn promotion. It'll be tough deciding who to play for. So, who will he be playing for? Let's take a look at his options. Fans of the popular manga, Captain Tsubasa, will recognize the name Nankatsu SC. Captain Tsubasa's creator, Yoichi Takahashi, was appointed chairman of the club's supporters association in 2013. With Takahashi's involvement, the club name changed from Katsushika Vitamado to Nankatsu SC, after the name of Tsubasa's boyhood club in the manga. And what a story it would be if King Kazu joined Nankatsu SC. Tsubasa's story, starting out playing high school football in Shizuoka Prefecture, before moving to Brazil to start his professional career, mirrors that of Kazu's career, who also played high school football in Shizuoka for Shizuoka Gakuin, before moving to Brazil at the age of 15. Katsushika is in Tokyo and the club currently play in Kanto Soccer League Division 2, which is the regionalized sixth tier of Japanese football. But at the time of making this video, they're in the playoffs battling for promotion to Division 1. They also hold a J-League license, and signing a player of Kazu's reputation would be a further sign of ambition. In the Kyodo news story, Takahashi said, We desire to be a team we can proudly present to the world. The reality of Kazu playing for us would be amazing on its own. I hope he will join us. Kazu is said to have already held talks with Nankatsu, and the club would likely offer him the increased playing time he desires, if he's willing to drop down the leagues. At the time of making this video, Kazu is training in Osaka, and has apparently already received an offer from FC Osaka, who play in the JFL, just one step below the J-League, and the club hold a J-League license. FC Osaka have been knocking on the door of the J-League for a number of years now, so could the signing of Kazu be the push they need to get them over the line? Of course, signing Kazu would be a financial boost through the increased attention and marketing opportunities. He would also be a great mentor to the younger players, i.e. all the players, and should still have the quality to play a role on the pitch in the fourth tier of Japanese football. Another JFL club that have made an offer for Kazu are Suzuka Point Getters. The club are based in Mie Prefecture, and ended this season 4th in the league, their highest finish to date. With the J-League within touching distance, similar to FC Osaka, signing Kazu could help push Suzuka over the line. It would also be another fantastic chapter in Kazu's career if he can help Suzuka into the J-League, making them the first club for Mie to play in the professional ranks. Point Getters, whose interesting name is part of a sponsorship deal with a point shopping website, have apparently already made an offer to Kazu. Another club who are believed to have offered Kazu a deal are YSCC. The Yokohama club play in J3 and just had their best season to date, finishing 8th in the table. Yokohama FC and YSCC play at the same stadium, so this move makes sense in terms of convenience for Kazu. YSCC have a reputation of signing young, local players, so Kazu would go against that philosophy. However, he would surely be a great mentor to the young squad. 
and staying in the J-League must be enticing to Kazu if he can be assured of enough playing time. Okinawa's FC Ryukyu just finished 9th in J2, their best league performance to date. It was their third consecutive season in the second tier and they've nicely established themselves at this level. But can they push on next season and mount a J1 promotion challenge? And can the signing of Kazu help them achieve this? He wouldn't be the first veteran player the club has signed. Kazu's fellow former Japan international, Shinji Ono, spent two seasons with Ryukyu in 2019 and 2020, when he was in his early 40s. But signing Kazu, who will be in his mid-50s next season, is maybe a bit much for an ambitious J-League club. Again though, Kazu's experience and commercial pull may be enough to convince Ryukyu to make an offer. Although, it's hard to imagine Kazu would get much playing time in J2. Back in the JFL, Kochi United from Shikoku are also said to be interested in signing Kazu. Kochi reached the JFL in 2020 and are still trying to find their feet at this level, with both seasons in the fourth tier having been threatened by relegation. For a smaller club like Kochi, the signing of Kazu would be a huge coup. Without wanting to sound like a broken record, the club would benefit commercially from having Kazu on the books. But Kazu has also stated that he wants to join a club striving for promotion, and Kochi United don't have a J-League license. But playing for a smaller club that's close to the community, like Kochi United, may appeal to Kazu. Kansai Soccer League side Okoshiyasu Kyoto made headlines in 2021 by thumping J1 team Sanfrecce Hiroshima 5-1 in the second round of the Emperor's Cup. They also qualified for the end of season Regional Champions League, which is a step towards achieving promotion to the Japan Football League. However, the club failed to progress, meaning another season in the Kansai Soccer League awaits in 2022. But they've certainly shown that they're ambitious and capable of stunning performances. Kazu spent a successful two season spell at Kyoto Sanga in 1999 and 2000 scoring 21 goals in 42 games. A return to Japan's ancient capital might appeal, especially with ambitious Okoshiyasu, who are capable of promotion and have strong community links. Playing in the fifth tier of Japanese football should also mean Kazu gets more game time. One of the more intriguing possible options for Kazu is a move to Singapore to play for Alburex Niigata Singapore. They're the only professional Japanese team that doesn't play in Japan and are the satellite club of J2 side Alburex Niigata. They're also one of the most successful teams in the Singapore Premier League, having won the title four times in the last six years. So a move to Singapore would give Kazu another shot at winning a top division title. But whether or not he'd get much playing time in a team pushing for honours is debatable. Kazu though does have a history of challenging himself in different countries, having previously played in Brazil, Italy, Croatia and Australia. This could be his last chance to play overseas, which might be a tempting proposition. Of course, there's still the chance that Kazu could stay with Yokohama FC. He's been with the club since 2005, playing almost 300 games. However, Kazu has had limited playing time the last few seasons, featuring in only 9 league games in 2018, 3 in 2019, 4 in 2020, and only 1 in 2021. And with Kazu said to be seeking more playing time, it's hard to see how he can stay with Yokohama FC, even after their relegation to J2. But if Kazu does agree to stay on with Yokohama FC, he'll be able to continue his career alongside Shinsuke Nakamura, who, at 43 years old, has agreed a new deal with the club for the 2022 season. And of course, there's the possibility that King Kazu calls time on his illustrious career. 
After 34 seasons playing for clubs across the world, winning honours and inspiring countless footballers in Japan and overseas, it would be perfectly understandable if Kazu decides now is the right time to hang up his boots. But judging by the statements he's been making, it doesn't sound like the 54 year old is ready to stop just yet. A drop down the leagues though may suggest that this next move could be his last and the beginning of the end of one of the greatest careers in the history of football. So what do you think is next for King Kazu? Who do you think he'll sign for next? Or do you think he'll decide this is the right time to retire? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments section. And as always, thank you very much for watching.